here's the Quiet Cat Apex 10. So this is the 1000 watt mid-drive motor. Been riding it around today, turkey hunting in Idaho, um, chasing down some mountain turkeys in this steep country. And I uh, just wanted to point out some first impressions. So far, it's pretty fun. I mean, it definitely saves a lot of energy for later, for walking around, you know, especially when I'm hoofing it up and down these hills. I've got it set up pretty nice. Um, it's got some nice accessories. I really like this Culpin rifle mount. It would work well for a bow or fishing rods and stuff too. I also had tried another one, the Gator or something or other. And, this is kind of my favorite out of the two. I just think it's a little more versatile and especially on a bike with bars that aren't totally flat. This one just makes it really easy to mount. I like the, the it, we added this little front fender on, which is pretty cool. It just keeps the mud off your crotch. And then the rest of it's pretty standard other than these saddlebags, which are great. You know, these are right from Quiet Cat, so they clip on nice, they're real compatible and they ride super well and you know, they're, they're rubberized or whatever you call it, but the, you roll them up so even in, mud and water, I'm pretty sure those are gonna be just fine. It's got the veil, what do they call it, Kaza, I think, camo, which happens to be what I've got on my Numa camo. So I am like the more, more coordinated than I've ever been in my life. Um, even the camo matches, so that's kind of cool. You got the inverted um, front forks, which are just better, you know, suspension, and it is pretty smooth. It's got the bigger wheels, 29 inch. But you know, to be honest, I don't know if that's a deal breaker or not. It does, it's pretty smooth and great, but um, it's also harder to transport. <laughs> Found that out. And I'm getting a motorcycle hitch carrier to transport it around since I drive an SUV. Oh, this little jobber. That's your where you charge the battery at if you leave the battery in, which I have so far. It's kind of a pain to get inside. See, it just doesn't want to go in nice. There we go. All the cables are routed inside the frame, which is also nice. I don't know if this is an upgraded seat or not. It's the Comfort Plus one, but it's pretty nice. And then even, you know, the the brakes here. So compared to like the Ranger, these are, um, you know, upgraded. These are hydraulics. Um, they, I think they put disc brakes on all their bikes, but these are hydraulics. I don't love this kind of thing. I mean, they got some things strapped up to try to keep all the brake lines and the cables organized, but honestly, I think it's a little messy. I don't love that. You know, it seems, I, I don't know how people fix it, but some of those newer e-bikes, I know, integrate that into the frame or whatever, which should be cool, but but it works fine. It's not a big deal. It hasn't been a problem or anything. This is a heavy bike. Like I, I found that out when I was trying to load it up and figure out a good way to put it on my car that it's, it's just like, you can't use a regular even e-bike carrier because usually those are only rated for up to like 60 pounds. Dry, this thing's like, 71 pounds that i think that might be with the battery definitely not something you want to put on a a regular bike rack that won't last so solution i came up with which works well for one is at harbor freight i found a hitch motorcycle carrier for like 170 bucks with some decent tie downs and that was super sturdy my first plan was i was going to take the front wheel off and put it in my suv which is you know very mom mobile honda pilot it was still too big quiet cat does sell a nice rack that I assume is, you know, good and sturdy for these. And, and there's a couple more out there. They're just so darn expensive. So I was trying to find something a little more economical. And the best I came up with so far is that motorcycle rack. It's pretty simple. You just hold down the power button to get it to go on or off. Just for a couple seconds. The light button is really just the backlight on this display. So I, you hold it down and it, it dims. That's probably just for like, you know, if you're cruising at night or something. And then we got the info button that just changes, you know, where it says trip right now. You click it and, you know, odometer, I think that's total miles on the bike. And then your, you know, max speed that you've gone, average speed and so on. Range seems to say 35 miles at a full charge. I don't really trust that. I don't think that's going to be the case. Quick double click. Yeah, on the info button. Yeah, and then you can use the, the plus and minus sign to go through if you go to information hit the i button you can get information or change settings and stuff but display settings that's where you go and like change your trip here you, uh, so it, sa it says no you make it say yes and then it'll reset the trip meter and all that here i could you can change it from eco mode to sport mode just by holding down on the the plus button and then it goes into sport 
just gives a little more oomph, a little more torque. Um, but I kind of want, I'm out here in the woods for a few days, so I'm going to try to conserve this battery as much as I can. So let me hold down the plus button again until it goes back to eco. You hold down the minus button and it'll like walk. It'll So it'll start creeping along like just super slow. That was handy actually today. I just used it to kind of, I was parked over here in these bushes. I had it laid down while I was calling a gobbler. And um, when I came back up, I use that just to walk it up on the flat spot where I could get back on. So I mean, that's kind of kind of it. I mean, um, you can go to zero. There's speed zero through five. What I'm finding handy is like to get going. I, I put it in one and then I push on the button to start going and then I can balance up and start pedaling. All right, quick resume while it's on my mind. Today was really my first day riding the hunting e-bike in earnest while I'm out like actually hunting. Been doing some uh, wild turkey hunting up here in Idaho. I gotta say, like, it was really fun. It was really good. It was actually better than I anticipated. I, I've ridden dirt bikes and motorcycles my whole life. So I was to be honest thinking, oh, this is gonna be like a dirt bike at first. It's gonna have all this torque and just rip. It does not do that. They don't do that. They really are like an assisted bike, but it, you know, that made it actually super fun. It was really quiet. I was able to cover way more ground. I probably only did like six miles, but I got up here, you know, afternoon. And I was just kind of going around some old logging roads, a lot of this kind of stuff. There's some clear cuts in this area. And then there's some pretty nice like cedar forests and a lot of dense stuff too. So it's really mixed and it's been super fun. You know, I'd ride for a hundred, couple hundred yards. I'd stop, I'd call, don't hear anything. I keep going and just did that sort of all day long. Got a gobble. He can't be far. For a while, about a couple hours actually, I was parked in one spot where I was hearing a gobbler, but couple of things that I thought, you know, while I was riding that kind of struck me as different than like a regular bike or a motorcycle. You really do got to downshift before you go uphill. Like, I mean, the actual mechanical gears, but also the speed. I found a third speed in the electric motor was about prime. But the um, downshift in before was important because this mid drives, you know, the one big risk is that you break a chain and then you're kind of out of luck. Like the motor's not going to pull you and you can't pedal. So... You gotta be a little sensitive to that. Like, so some of these steeper trails out behind me, it was actually pretty steep. The electric motor was working hard and I was pedaling. It's the only one where I kind of broke a sweat and it's not that long, it's maybe a quarter mile like that, but it does sort of add up. So you wanna have, be shifted in the right gear before you start going. When you're cruising through mud puddles and stuff, did plenty of that today and that was super smooth. The traction was great. The fat tires made it like, never felt like I was gonna jackknife my wheel and endo like I might on a real bike or even I've done that on dirt bikes. Uh, it went through real nice. Uh, you're not going crazy fast, but you just kind of keep your pedals up and in the center and just push on the lever and that'll, that took me right through. You gotta be a little sensitive when you're flipping a Yui because if you just push on that lever too hard, <laughs> about uh, flip my, tip myself over. Uh, oh, and then when you're going up a hill, even these little like bumps are like a berm, you know, like here on the side of the road, stuff like that. If you're going up that, you really got to pedal all the way up to the tippy top. Otherwise, if you stop at the last second, you'll just work that electric motor. doesn't quite carry you over. You know, I'm a bigger guy too. Like I'm a 225, uh, you know, all loaded up with gear, my bags and my gun and everything. It's probably 250 pounds on that bike. That's better than most bikes would do though for me. So pretty stoked. Day one report. Done. About the end of day one, no turkeys on public land. Other than, well, I had one gobbler this morning, but, or this afternoon, but he didn't come in close enough. And then some bear hunter with his hounds came riding up on it side by side and blew that. But a little unexpected treat. I stumbled upon a bunch of morels. You know, I got the wrong kind of bag. I left the little screen bag in my car, but that was pretty cool. Well, it's on the top of my mind. I want to give a summary of um, day two on the Quiet Cat Apex 10 Hunting e-bike, again, a lot of fun, really fun day. This thing's pretty quiet, you know, compared to driving it, riding a dirt bike or an ATV or something. This is gonna be way, way quieter than, uh, you know, some combustion engine. However, when I notice when you're coasting though, it has that kind of sound like the, the little click sound, like um, just like any bike does when you're not pedaling, you're just coasting. That's actually probably the noisiest thing on this bike. The motor, at least the mid-drive, this is the mid-drive one, it's it's super quiet. It also depends on the surface you're on, so a lot of this was a gravel road, and the gravel was pretty loud. So that's what happened once. I kind of busted a, a group of turkeys. They ran across the road ahead of me. Unfortunately, I 
I didn't see them before they heard me, but actually I startled them too because I was within 100 yards. I mean, it was pretty close. At the end of the day yesterday, I had, think I had like eight miles on this, on the on the trip meter. Been riding this most of the day, so right now it says 54% battery and I did 7.7 .7 miles and I tripped that maybe a tenth or two after I started, so call it eight miles. And so I was gonna see how, I, how long I could go on one battery. Uh, 15.3 miles, that sounds pretty accurate. I'm at 5% battery now, and once you're down below 10, like 20%, the little battery indicator turns yellow. At 10%, it turns red, and it, and it seems to cut off full power. Like, even if you put it in fifth speed, you're only getting the power of maybe second. And so it throttles that, probably just to conserve the end of the battery and not to overload the battery when it's low on charge. You know, so it's pretty much done. I mean, I'm not gonna be able to take it out again. That kind of gives you an idea. I mean, I think, and that much, I got that much only because I was milking it. I pedaled a ton. I never went over third speed, and then I I was pedaling enough to where I was actually working at it. You know, that's probably the top end and, and pretty typical use if you're being fairly conservative, I'd say, out hunting. You know, these are, I was on a gravel road and some dirt trails and some even kind of grown over grass trails, some mud, some puddles, some up and down the whole bit. If I had it in sport mode, there's no way I would have gone that long. You know, so probably only put it in sport mode if you got an extra battery or if you know you're not going that far just zipping around town or whatever. Now, the bummer is, here I am, I got a few hours of hunting time left today um, and all day tomorrow, and I don't have any more battery, so that's kind of a bummer. Um, but that was a great experience. I mean, man, I wish I would've gotten one of those gobblers so I could've hauled it out on this thing. No dice today. At least I was getting into them on public land. Oh, just to mention, I, on all the, like going over rocks and sticks and I didn't go over any big logs or anything, but stuff that's still probably up to six inches in diameter. This thing just cruises, man. It's super stable and also ruts, like going up this really super rutted, muddy road. You know, the risk is you get fall into the rut and you tip over. Anything with skinny tires, usually that happens, uh, but not at all. Like I even slid, slipped into a couple ruts and was able to maintain balance. And it just goes over stuff super nice. I mean, those fat, Cushy tires are great. I, my butt is a bit sore today from sitting on that thing so much and for sitting on the hard ground against trees trying to call turkeys, but um, it's, a, it's a great bike. It's a lot of fun. Let's see what else, uh, what else do I need to say about it?